cooking again. Right. Oh. Oh. It's starting to... <laughs> yeah, that's gonna be lava. Chunky lava. Mm-hmm. Chunky meat lava. Okay, then, so the gravy ain't gonna come off. No, scrape. it's not gonna come off. Just scrape oh, it against the side of the pot. Lava. It's like spitting at her now. Have you noticed she hasn't salted once? I doubt she needs to. Chef Ryan Sow here, not your typical chef, owner of Mission Sandwich Social, located right here in Williamsburg, Brooklyn, and the only winner of Beat Bobby Flay season one. Today, I'm gonna be reacting to Kay's cooking beef alphabet pasta soup my way with guest chef Byron Cutlassoy. Before I go on with today's episode, I do wanna give a shout out to all of my amazing sous chef level patrons. Guys, thank you so much for your support. You, along with all the patrons, really do make a difference on this channel. And remember, by becoming a patron, you get to take advantage of some awesome perks like early access to new episodes, but more importantly, patron exclusive content. Byron, what is up, my man? It has been too damn long. And look at you, I love that shirt. I, you know, if for, for everyone who doesn't know, well, actually, I'll let you tell the audience. Tell the audience where you're working, how we know each other, and what you're all about. I'm Chef Byron. I've uh, worked everywhere from New York to now I am in Florida. Florida as a private chef. That lifestyle is completely different from my New York, New York lifestyle where now I barely work. <laughs> so Chef Byron and I uh, worked together at Beauty in Essex. He was one of the sous chefs over there uh, and one of my favorite people to work with over there. And now you're wearing these uh, wild shirts, man. Hey, you know, someone's got to re recreate uh, Don Johnson from Magnum P.I. You know, so I got to keep that familiar face from Florida. Going. So have you ever uh, seen Kay's cooking videos? I have not. Uh, from the little snippet that uh, Amy showed me, I think the this wonderful is be... Amy Ernst. This is going to be quite the uh, reaction yes. you're going to get. All right, so let's just get right into it, shall we? And I'm back cooking again. And today I'm doing a twist of different soups. Oh. I'm going to show you. <laughs> Gotta love the oh, editing. This is really what I'm going to do. First off, we're, we are we are 20 seconds into the video right now. <laughs> I know where she's going next. And she has ground beef. Ugh. So Byron, if you were to make a beef soup, beef alphabet pasta soup, okay? If you were to make a beef alphabet pasta soup, what kind of beef would you use? Some kind of beef stew meat, yes. not ground beef. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Generally, for soups, you want to use something that is a tougher cut, like like anything from shank to uh, top brown to, well, I mean, what, what, any other cuts you would use? For a stew, I, I usually use whatever scraps I have that isn't full of gristle or fat. And, yeah, true. Um, but yeah, a chuck. Yeah, chuck is great. You know, um, a lot of soups and stews benefit. You know, go great with a cut of beef that's a little on the tougher side that you cook low and slow. By the time it's ready, it's super nice and tender. Ground beef is not really that applicable. No, yeah. especially when the fat separates from the meat, you yeah. just get a... All these granules. Uh, and... So I'm curious what kind of ground beef is, because you see the packaging for a brief second and before she stabs into it. So that is 20% fat. That is an 80-20, so that has a fair amount of fat in there. Oh yeah, by the looks of that package, looks like it's a little bloated and... Yes. <laughs> Blown up there. How long has that been in her fridge? Or it could have just been sitting out in the, on the counter. Right on top of that hot stove. Right on top of that hot stove. Ooh, see how it deflated there? Do you, see, do, you, do you see she's holding the knife by the blade? Oh, <laughs> oh man. And what you, if you want to know what the twist is. There's a twist, okay. I am supposed to be doing beef soup and Alphabet soup. Beef soup now and I alphabet know soup. Oh. The alphabet soup. Keep digging your fingers in there. Pasta. And there is Just no way, I know you'd like me to, but there is no way I am going to sit up all night cutting alphabet letters out in pasta. Okay. Do you uh, notice that the inside of the ground beef is darker than the outside? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah. it's a very common practice that's, you know, Ill I think illegal now, but um, they, where they take the old beef and then they cover it with the new beef. So that's why the inside's always dark. Okay. I remember as a kid, you know, growing up, my parents would always be weary about buying ground beef that was pre-packaged. Like, you know, they have the counter where you can watch them pack the beef. Right. 
typically that is nice and fresh, but the pre-packaged ones always had this giant. So a store would open it up and then refold it on itself? More, more or less. That, that's not her fault. But uh, yeah, I, she said this is alphabet soup and that she's not going to stay up all night cutting the pasta. You know, I don't think any chef really has cut letters out of pasta. No. You usually buy indu industrial made shaped pasta right. noodles. Right. Yeah. So I have no idea where this is going. Uh, well, where do you think this is going, Byron? Uh, well, I think she's going to boil the hell out of that <laughs> ground beef. <laughs> and it's going to look gray and gnarly. I've got all the mince meat. <laughs> I forget they call it minced meat. There are s certain types of Chinese style soup where they'll make like these meatballs mm -hmm. and you know, put that into the soup. Right. I think that can be nice, but not just like ground beef thrown into water and boiled. No. You know, I do think she could have made a beef soup with ground beef if she made the meatballs. Right. You know, but if she didn't have any kind of binder, it's just gonna still it's gonna break apart and turn into yeah, gray, sandy water. And I'm just breaking it all up. If it don't, well, at least her spatula and her pot match. Yeah. If it don't cook properly, that's we'll not have cooking to properly. Get anyway. anyway. Oh, now, now it looks like a brain. Ugh. Right, so that's all submerged <laughs> in water. Okay. Now I'm going to start on the pasta. Okay, okay. all right. This. I'm going to put some <laughs> pasta in, the, in, the, oh, in a dish. I keep saying in a dish, I mean in a pan. Oh, okay. Shaped in some butter. Okay. I mean, there's no alphabets there. Wait, what? She said she's making alphabet soup. Beef alphabet soup. Where's the water, boiling water for the... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lord. Now, she's laughing to me. Some water in it. <laughs> All right, big no-no. It's it seems like I love how we see nothing that's going on right now. Yeah. Anyway, raw pasta into the pot first, a and then you know I'm guessing she's gonna add the water and then start I think that's it from what she cold. Said, yeah. Now, how would you? Uh, what is po proper pasta cookery, Byron? Everywhere, everywhere I've cooked pasta in any restaurant I've worked, it's always boiling salted water. Yes. And then you follow your cooking time yes. because what happens if what happens if you start the pasta from cold? It's just going to turn to mush. Exactly. Starch granules are going to absorb all that moisture. It's just going to be mushy and soft, and you're not going to have that nice little chew and bite that they call al dente. Yeah. <laughs> oh, and there, there's not enough water either. <laughs> Yeah, that's the right one. Who's that? Oh, no, Her son. Yeah, oh. that's that one. Never know which ring it is. Oh, Her so taste tester. Me, me, isn't it? Mm, nah. Mince will take an hour oh. to boil. An and hour. Start She's going to boil that for an eight, hour. No, it said six minutes to, to boil. So another thing to add with pasta cookery is that you should be cooking your pasta in a great, a much greater quantity than the pasta itself, because when you add the pasta into the boiling water, it's going to cool it down and then it's no longer going to be at a boil, right? But the greater the mass of the water, the more heat retention that there will be. That's just pasta cookery 101. And she has her ratio over there seems to be like one to one. <laughs> I was gonna say almost probably two to one pasta water. water. <laughs> oh, oh, no. No. <laughs> oh. Cook. And what I'm gonna do is look at all that scum. Normally, when you do any kind of stew or even stocks, you take the bones for a stock or you know something like you said, a piece of chuck, where generally it's gonna be cubed up, and then you blanch it. Right. So can you explain to the audience what the process of blanching is and why we do it? Well, you boil some water and then you would blanch your beef into the boiling water as it cooks. It's going to release all that that you see there. Probably a lot less because it's not ground beef. Yeah. <laughs> and you are essentially pulling the impurities and stuff out of the meat and also cook, uh, excuse me, jump starting it. Exactly. Into the process. I couldn't have explained it any better. That's exactly what it is. Um, and generally, you dump out that water. Yeah. Right? right. And or at least use a ladle and skim it off. Right. So uh, it doesn't get ma mixed back into it. And exactly. Now you're going to have a really cloudy uh, end product. And I mean, you want to eat that, guys? You want to eat that? Are you anyone, anyone hungry right now? I'm not. I was hungry. I did want lunch. We'll go to the shop later and get you a sandwich. I'm going to slice. Some carrots, oh, you can see. Now I'm gonna start. I'm slicing some carrots. Not even on a cutting board. Into the mincemeat. She's cutting towards herself, 
straight to her thumb so you know how sharp that knife is. Oh, oh just yeah, skim, done, skim done, all done. that stuff off just the top, guys. Come done. on. But yes, Come I'm on, just Kate. dancing some carrots. It's, it's optional what oh. you use. You can use carrots, peas, beans, greeny, whichever you want to use. Harry rolls. <laughs> No. What's her son want to use? What, what, say, that, say that again? So what's her son want to use? He had some input there. <laughs> I think he said, yeah, some onions. Generally, when you're making a soup, a Western style soup, you have a stock that's made with bones and mirepoix. Mirepoix being a French term for a mixture of, uh, you know, just generalizing onions, carrots, and celery, and along with some other things. And that's like the base flavor. But when you're making a soup or a stew, Generally, you want to put your veg towards the l latter part of the right. soup. So again, it doesn't get mushy. We have no idea how long this beef has been cooking for. I only see carrots. I really hope there's more going into this. Probably not. not that it's going to save it. No. No. Oh, you got to love her consistent well, knife skills. Yeah. It's important to cut your, your, your product consistently you know all the same size because this way it ensures that it's going to cook evenly between every every piece but we know k doesn't care i'll see the one floating it's just floating on an island of meat or is that scum <laughs> <laughs> An island of scum Ugh. i'm only putting three carrots in only three. i'm not putting no onions in no onions why because Oh, look, there's another one. <laughs> it's got a friend. That carrot's got a friend on the island now. <laughs> Does she even realize it's not submerged? That's why I'm not Oh, there she goes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it might have been me. Ooh. Oh, look at that. Right, that's cooking nicely. Making me teary. Now, the reason I put the carrots in early and not put them in a second tin, <laughs> and then second tin, second pan. It's either a dish or a tin, isn't it? Yeah, the no. reason I put them in with mincemeat is because mincemeat needs an hour. Not now, it doesn't. Uh, mincemeat needs an hour, and the carrots will have gone nice and soft by that time. Wow. So she's saying the mincemeat needs an hour, and the carrots will be nice and soft. I mean, she's not wrong. Yeah, she's not wrong. <laughs> I don't, uh, I don't know if mincemeat needs an hour. Now I'm going to put some oh. gravy granules in. I don't uh, know how many. I'm just going to put quite a few in. What are, what are gravy granules? Uh, I guess some kind of powdered gravy mix. Yeah. Like, oh. Like Nors or something like yeah, that. Bouillon almost, maybe? Like a bouillon cube. I'm pretty sure it, uh, it has some kind of, you know, probably has, it said gravy granules. I'm pretty yeah. sure it has some kind of thickening agent in there. Say like a cornstarch yeah, or something, yeah. right? Let's see how fast it thickens. You can use any gravy granules. It doesn't have to be expensive. It can <laughs> be as cheap whole as soup chips, is lumpy, dude. Oh. Oh, no, it's David Dickinson, isn't it? It can be as cheap. Mm -hmm. No, forget Look at that big, big thing of gravy <laughs> granule. Yeah, that's him. I never watched it. He says cheap, cheap as oh. chip. No. Oh. I've thickening. never seen ground beef see boiled like that before. To... Like, like oh. seeing this texture is new to me. I'm actually learning something here. What not to do, <laughs> <laughs> chef? Oh, look at the smoke! Yeah, baby. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, that's gonna be lava, chunky lava. Mm-hmm. Chunky meat lava. Okay, then, so the gravy ain't gonna come off. No, just it's scrape, not gonna come off. Just scrape it against the side of the pot. Lava. It's like spitting at her now. Have you noticed she hasn't salted once? I doubt she needs to with that gravy mix. It's probably full <laughs> MSG or something, but... Uh, <laughs> you don't have to put an OXO in. What is that? It's your choice. I'm just showing you what I do. OXO? Mine, uh, mine is a uh, reduced salt, which reduced salt? some people just said, does it really matter? Some people say, no, it, uh, yes, uh, it matters. Yeah, for you guys watching in the audience, I don't speak British, so if you know what the f she just said, please let us know in the comments below. Uh, did you catch that, Byron? I sound like she said OXO. Yeah, that's what I heard, OXO. Maybe like OxyClean or something? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, oh, what is that? No, I don't know. That's the oh, oh, that's, no, that's, no, that's the gravy, gravy powder. powder. Yeah. I told you she wasn't finish. stirring it. <laughs> it's like when you add cornstarch to boiling like that. You gotta stir it. Don't or make a slurry. Oh, can you tell our audience what a slurry is when you're using cornstarch? A slurry corn is a, a thickening agent made with any kind of starch or f powdered starch or flour. You make a little bit of a mixture ahead of time, turn it into like a 
a thicker, like a heavy, paste. heavy cream tech, uh, heavy cream consistency. Yes. Yeah. Viscosity. Viscosity. Yes. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're professionals. And here. you whisk it into your boiling liquid in order to keep yourself from getting a big lump of gravy granule like yeah. that. <laughs> yes. Look at the beef. It, it's like beef, it's beef, beef like noodles of beef noodles. <laughs> <laughs> it's literal um, beef noodles. It's all going to be nice, you know. Where's the alphabets? Right. I think so they're in the I pot just, behind. As a, We'll tell you again. I've got carrots in here, minced meat, gravy granules, and an oxo. Um, ready for the beef soup. Oh, it's beef minced meat, by the way. Oh. That's why it's called beef soup. And I'm burning <sighs> my hand as I am stirring it. Oh. Now the oh, there, is, there it is. I'm going to ah, oh. drain it off camera. Okay. I doubt she salted the water no, for the pot. Yeah. Serving two. Or two people and a dog. I was going to say, that <laughs> looks like a dog bowl. <laughs> and I'm going to, oh, I'm throwing it on the cooker. Huh? I'm going to put it on the cooker. Look at that. Oh, man. Oh, <laughs> come on. And I'm going to put it in dishes. That pan is really heavy. I don't really see the soup. You know what yeah, I mean? I, like I thought she'd make an alphabet soup. Beef well, alphabet soup. Or is it just, just like But it's it's shy, just but. like it looks like she's just making pasta. I don't know what that cut is right there. I'm terrible with my pasta names, but uh, farfalle. Is that what it is? Or yeah, multi okay. farfalle, yeah. So so it just looks like a pasta dish with beef sauce. I was gonna say it's like a bolognese. <laughs> that, you call that a bolognese? <laughs> What's the pasta? British, I mean? British bolognese, everybody. Yeah. Right, that's all the pasta mm. that's on the, in the dishes. Yes, I'm going to wrap this. Ow. Looks more like that than a beef this time or dishes. soup. Now I'm going to put the <laughs> alphabet pasta soup. <laughs> alphabet pasta beef. No, it's Asta. Asta. Beef soup, isn't it? Mm -hmm. I mean, she's got a lot of eyes. The letter I's in her soup. Yeah. That's about it. Everybody's gonna have a bit of everything. Is she really about to serve a dog? Does she That's not have thing. a third plate? <laughs> she might not. It's not really soup, He just says, not really soup, I think. So I'm off. It's a beef oh. gravy. What is that? Gravy train dog food. What is that? This is the end product of <laughs> alphabet Prison soup. Food. If you're gonna do an alphabet soup, a beef alphabet soup, what would if what would you have done differently? I would have started with my beef chunks, probably tossed them in some flour, seared them up, took them out, deglazed, added some kind of beef broth, and uh, just let our audience know what deglaze means. Uh, you take a liquid and after you sear your meat, you get all the fond, which is all the stuff that sticks to the pan. Deglaze it with the liquid to, to break all that up and get all that flavor yeah. into the soup. So after that, add everything back in, let that boil low and slow with the beef chunks until they're nice and tender. Cook the alphabet pasta on the side that we sourced organically. <laughs> <laughs> add your vegetables in when that beef is almost done. Put everything together at the end, season to taste. There you go. And enjoy. Basic, ba very basic. Like, he didn't even tell you specifically what vegetables, what cut of meat. Like, it can be applied to so many proteins. Obviously, something like a beef chuck will take a lot longer to cook then I don't know why you would use this in a soup, but you know, something like a filet mignon. No, let's not go there. Let's say chicken, right? Like if you've chopped up some chicken bone in, uh, that obviously won't take nearly as long as a chuck, but the framework, everything you just said, Byron, is the framework for a good soup anywhere. That's not soup. <laughs> no, that's not. Big, big chunk of gravy. Oh my God, you're right. There is still big chunks of gra gravy granules. There oh my is. God. There it is. Look at that right there. Just big globules of, of salt, probably. Yeah, of MSG. It's like, a, it's like a salt lick. The soap and beef soap. Off camera. Is he eating out of the dog bowl? Yeah. <laughs> 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 Just eat it. Hmm. <laughs> High as a kite. Look at his. 
Look at Kay. <laughs> I didn't notice. Two fucks on him. Jordan, can you zoom in on that? <laughs> oh. it's, I, yeah, I can't explain it, but it's nice. It's just nice. Uh, it's I nice? Think it's I think he's being nice. Yeah, it's nice. It's being like, nice. Thumbs up. Oh. I know I'm sorry I'm supposed to do an alphabet, but I did pasta, which is more or less the same. So I hope that's all right you are to me. Pasta soup and beef soup, which is all together, which I've done it all together. But that gives you a rough idea of what to do. Obviously, yours will be a lot different. Ooh. Brutal, brutal. That was that was that was rough. I love Kay. She seems like the sweetest lady. I'm, sh you know, I know, I can tell that her intentions are right. Yeah. You know, she's putting this on YouTube for everyone to view. I mean, you know, it's. Uh, Does she have a following? Uh, yeah, she's she's got way more subscribers than me. <laughs> just goes to show you the people want to be entertained by yeah Aaron. <laughs> yeah uh, it's entertainment i'm disappointed we never got to see where the dog <laughs> the doggy bowl went yeah i hope you enjoyed yourself it was so damn good to see you man yeah. uh i gotta have you back uh, it's good to see you. And uh, with that said, everybody, hope you enjoyed this video as much as Byron and I oh. did not enjoy watching this. And uh, with that said, don't be afraid to fail because it can only make you stronger. And with that said, I'm Chef Brian Sow, not your typical chef. And I'll see you really soon. <laughs>